Hey everyone, so this is a quick video about the power of using bookmarks whilst coding. I paired with a lot of developers over the years, and I don't think I've ever seen anyone else use bookmarks before. I find them really, really powerful, so I thought it was worth a video to raise awareness of how they can be used to keep you in the zone and increase productivity. We're all full stack developers nowadays, and even when working on a single feature, we tend to jump around a lot and have lots of different files open. For example, your tests, your front end code, your back end code, application logic layer, data layer, DevOps files, and so on. If you're a front end developer, you might be jumping between different pages, components, CSS files, JavaScript files. And if you're using something like Redux, you might also be jumping around between actions, reducers, and effects. So you get the idea, lots of jumping around. And you might not realize it, but this adds quite a bit of cognitive load and can prevent you from being as deeply in the zone as you could be if you were using bookmarks. So I'm going to do a very basic example in Rider in a .NET project. But remember that this video is more about the concept of bookmarks in your IDE, regardless of choice of IDE, language or framework. So don't worry if you're not a Rider user, pretty much all IDEs support bookmarks. So let's take a look. So this is a quick Blazor project I created. I wanted a few different places I could demo putting bookmarks. This is very simple. In your production application, you might have a lot of other things as well. So in a .NET application, you might be using like mediators. So you might have different handlers as well as your controllers. You might be using the repository pattern, please don't. But if you are, that's more places to jump around. There might be lots of different things, but I wanted to keep it simple. So I've just used the stock Blazor project. One thing I have done is I've added a test project and I've put a very simple integration test. So it's just doing a get request against the controller. Have I got it open? I'm not going to open. Let's expand this. When you create the stock project, it creates a weather forecast controller, which is your API entry point. So my test is just doing a get HTTP request against that and asserting that the status code should be okay. I wouldn't normally do this like this, but I wanted the very simplest possible because I just wanted some tests. We've got the controller, which I've just mentioned, which is like the API entry point on the back end. On the front end, we've got like different pages. So fetch data. So one change I've made, I've actually put this table into a component. So the weather forecast table, like this one, this was in the page. I've just made it a component. So it's another example of somewhere else you, where you'd be jumping around to, making it more like a real world scenario. So imagine I'm working on a feature that involves all this kind of stuff. I could, so I'm working in this table, so I could do control KK, and that's created this. As I mentioned in the intro, this is rider specific, but all IDs will support this. So just look up what your IDs keyboard shortcuts are for your bookmarks. Another thing I tend to do here is give this bookmark a name. Now in Rider, there's two places you can see bookmarks. If I press Alt 2, then we get a list of bookmarks here. So I can see it's here. here. I can click on one and I can press F2 and I can give it a name. Another place, which is kind of what I default to, is this pop-up. And I've actually mapped, if I go to settings, so Control, Alt and S, key maps, and just search for bookmark, then show bookmarks, I've mapped Control, Shift and Backslash, because that's really close together on the keyboard and it's very quick to type. I can't remember if this had a default keyboard shortcut or whether it was just unmapped. So that pops up this and again I can press F2 and I can give it a name. So in this case, I'll give this like um, table. So this actually raises a good point. I tend to use bookmarks temporarily. So whilst I'm in a programming session, I will create those bookmarks in the context of what I'm working on. So I can give them short names like table or page or component or tests. I then delete them and I see them as very transient. So if I call this table, and this is in my component, but say I, in the page I'm working in, say I'm doing a bit of work in the parent page too, I can KK, I can give it a name, so I can call this one page, for example, if I'm in my tests. So I know I'm going to be jumping around and quickly jumping to the tests. I can do KK here, give it a name and just call it tests. If I go to the controller, so say I know I'm going to be doing stuff here as well because this is the back end, I can just do like KK, call it, I'll call it controller because that's meaningful for me at the time of this session. So now we've got four. And as I mentioned before, in a real world scenario, you might have a lot more. This view, if you're using Rider, I would rather click here and do and uncheck group line bookmarks by file. So it's just a list. 
or I can just, if I, I don't tend to use that one, I tend to, as I'm coding, I would do this control shift backslash and just I can jump. So I can jump to my page. I can jump to my tests. I can jump to the table if I need to make a change in the table. I can jump to my backend logic and make changes here. So as you can see, I can very easily jump around. So this was just a short video this time. Hopefully it got you thinking about how useful bookmarks can be. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Were you already using bookmarks? If not, are you going to try using them moving forwards after seeing this video? Feedback like this is really useful. And if you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe and share on social media. It really does help.